Hosting this session is going to be uh, the regional sales manager, Dr. Nugen Dukhuk from Fermentis, who holds a VLB Brew Master Certificate and a master's degree in biological engineering from Inna University in Korea. He is professionally trained in beer descriptive, uh, descriptive profiling and sensory with over 16 years of experience in the brewing indus industry. He has also worked for one of Vietnam's largest brewing groups, covering roles in brewing, uh, brewing Q&A, acting factor manager, and fermentation. This session will be in collaboration with head brewer from Geist, Ms. Vidya Kuber. May I please invite Ms. Vidya and our speaker from, from yes. Hello. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. I hope that you are very uh, audible here. Okay. There are two mics. So, uh, very interesting uh, session. Uh, I learned from the session is that Basun uh, aroma was uh, the favorite aroma last year, right? And the citrus, citrus the aroma. But uh, do you know that those aroma are very uh, uh, tropical and very famous? Those hop can give you that aromas become very expensive. Uh, and uh, in this uh, session, we will discuss a bit about the yeast uh, role that will interact with the hop and make more one of the basin fruits or citrusy aroma. So it means that the same hop but you may can enhance it, can have more uh, tiles specific aroma, which is, will bring you more basin fruit, more citrusy, more tropical fruit. Okay? So, um, in this session, we will start with the introduction, which we will talk a little bit about the background, a little bit biotransformation, biochemistry. Uh, yeah, it's good we start this session in the morning where we have a fresh friends we can absorb something complex, right? Biochemistry things. A second one, we will uh, go through our Taiwan's uh, release study, where very, uh, very uh, new study we did recently, and we will went through cascade study, and especially we will uh, go very deeply with the Niba case, because you would know in Niba we have a lot of hop hobby beer, and it would be very interesting that we study yeast and hop interaction in those uh, hobby beer, yeah? And uh, the, uh, in that Niba, we will uh, try the beer. Uh, we uh, collaboration brew with uh, guys uh, uh, brewing company where we make very nice uh, new style England IBA. Uh, and finally, we go to the key uh, message takeaway, okay? So, here's some uh, uh, information about the aromatics that uh, the hop may bring to you when you put the hop into uh, the uh, boiling or the lay hopping or dry hopping. You would extract uh, the free forms of the aroma form compounds, okay? So it means that something already there inside the hop, you would get it easily. However, there is some uh, compound that uh, in the uh, uh, potential forms. It means that it links to some other compo uh, compounds and you would not see it, you would not feel it, you cannot send it in the beer, okay? There is some uh, activity of the yeast you would need so that it would help you to release those compounds out so that you can, you can feel it, you can send it. That's very important. And uh, there is also, also some beer effect. Here you can see we uh, dried here. For example, the hot beer uh, flavor and uh, phenolic flavor sometimes not play uh, very good well together. It can cover each other. So the phenolic aroma can cover it with some hoppy aroma. So that's why the beer with a lot of uh, uh, phenolic uh, clove 
aroma, usually we will not pay attention on the hobby side, okay? Uh, here, the, the, the yeast power, we will talk more about the, uh, how we can uh, help the yeast to release more potential aroma out, okay? So here's the background. For the hop uh, side, we have uh, two very important families. The first one, everybody would know, the beans, where we have a main descriptors, floral, rose, like, and citrusy, yeah? And uh, the second one, which is gaining interest recently, which is tiles. And the main descriptor here, basin fruit. Yeah, last year, uh, favorite aroma, like uh, everybody said, right? Citrusy this year, maybe, fish. And the main thing is that it's tropical. So sometimes, uh, people feel that basin fruit, the other people not necessarily feeling the same, right? But they, they would answer the same answer, like tropical, top nose. Not necessary, but some fruit. And here, uh, these two sentences, quite similar from here to there, you will see the two family. You will not see, you will not feel it, and cannot uh, perceive it when it bound to other substance. Here, it bound to cysteine and glutathione. Over there, it bound to sugar chain. So it means that uh, the free form, you would get it. But the potential one, you have to have the yeast. Uh, with certain good condition, it can release those potential ones, okay? And the ratio between the free form and the bow form depends on the hop variety. That's very important. So different hop, it got different potential, okay? Now chemistry things. <laughs> very, uh, those very uh, important uh, tiles, you can see the structure. I don't want to read all the names here. Just remember, here's abbreviation of those uh, aroma, of those tiles. And very important here, the aroma is contribute, it make, yeah? So we have floral here, we have basin fruit, citrusy. And the main important here, you have to remember, please, here, very important message, very low threshold. Threshold is just for, for sure, everybody know, huh? we need to know, we need to have that amount of aroma in the beer in order to perceive it, okay? So if it's under the threshold, we cannot see. Somebody can say it may be something inside, but we don't know what is it, right? So it helps to go over threshold for, to make you feel exactly that specific aroma. And here, in the nanogram concentration, nanogram, okay, very low. So very powerful, for example, this one fine nanogram per liter. So we're not saying about the concentration, we're saying about how much a compound can give you the notes, okay? So there are two different types here, in tiles uh, form and in acetate form. One explanation here, this, uh, the two uh, compounds here, it's just different in the acetate or tiles. So it need to add five to make this one become this one. Okay, so you can see 55 nanogram of one substance, and after add 35, it becomes 10 times stronger in the power. So just need 5 nanogram instead of 55 to have the top notes. So the add certification very important here. So we have two activity. We need to release the hop out, and we need to add 35 as well. So you also have, can have the aroma, but add 35 can help you have more or more interesting things. Here, here's the easier explanation. So basically, the tiles will link about to all the substances, and usually glutathione or cysteine, okay? A bit hard to see our cysteine there, cysteine and glutathione, and because of that, we cannot see. We cannot perceive it, but with the yeast, Fermentation, it will release it. Okay, that's very important message. A bit more chemistry now. So we call it tile uh, precursor, which are cysteine and uh, glutathione bound uh, substances precursor. Okay, and what we want to do, 
we want to bring that inside the yeast, okay? And some certain magic, it releases out. Those basin fruit citrusy, if you want, to have, uh, to enhance the basin fruit nose, or citrusy one with the same hop, okay? The second part, this thion gonna be S35 to become acetate hop, even stronger stronger threshold, different top notes, okay? Making that rose basin fruit as well, but stronger, powerful. The other you don't have to pay attention on, that's uh, some other explanation, but here uh, you may want to know more what happened here and here, right? So we have here the beta liase and the uh, Two different explanations. The beta alias is gonna be released, uh, gonna help to release the 16 bound thiols. And if you want to release the harder one, which is the glutathione bounding, you need to have more enzyme. Okay? It's more complex and uh, harder release. We will go more on that now. Here, yes. So, on the top, we have similar information here. On the down, uh, bottom, we have here, very clear message. Huh? 16 uh, adults together with the thions, okay? We just need this one, beta lease, to cut it, to release it, the potential. And there, we have the second one, yeah, glutathione. Harder to release because we need beta lease, we need two other enzymes. And how the yeast going to, to release those two in different hop, we will say, we will see now. Here we check all the tiles released during the brewing scheme, okay? So we put the hop there, one, two, three, four, and we recognize that there is no tiles are released during the hop stage, okay? So in the, in the hot uh, place, no tiles released. And the tiles are released from the fermentation, from here, somewhere inside here. But in which stage? And how we can make it stronger or facilitate it happening? Okay, we have to run study to know that. Okay, so this one is synthetic uh, compounds that uh, similar to the, the compound is the hop. Okay, so we link the cysteine, uh, like precursor, precursor of thions in the hops, in two different style, to two different uh, uh, precursor, and we put it to fermentation, and check what happening, when the thions release and how it's released. So fermentation, seven day, 24 degrees Celsius, three days in maturation, and the thion extraction, you may don't want to to uh, study that much. It's a little bit more analysis. We want to know the principle of the yeast, and we try those different yeast for that trial, right? So how different yeast will react with that trial? We didn't try with the buff, uh, positive yeast, just because we don't want uh, to study the covering here. We want to study covering of the phenolic aroma and ar uh, hobby aroma interact each other. It hi hidden, it hide the aroma from your perceiving. So the lager, we uh, still have some more to do, but now we have a data for those uh, yeast. Wow, we need some time here, okay? Different yeast here, and we have different uh, tiles, okay? These tiles, and in the S therefore, okay? Thion release, so wherever we have the concentration of uh, percentage here, it's been, it's been released from what we put it in, okay, in the link form, in the bound forms. And now we see how it's going to the free form. So the concentration here, the higher is mean the releasing rate happening. And this uh, stripe, you can see, is the S35 form, okay? 
So the more it's refined, it means that the yeast doing some uh, extra step under, after the releasing step. That's, that's easy to understand. Huh? And you can see here, in this type of uh, tyons and tyons are set, KNA7 want to release more than the others, so, right? It released a lot more, S35 here a bit, and you can see S33 here is released less, but S35 more, okay? Very strong S certification rate here. USO5 here, SO4 also very strong, E256. That's one type of the tyons. The second one and the third one's there. The same baton, you can have baton, you can have K97 very strong, releasing and S certifying here as well. But S33 is kind of the king of S certification. Okay? SO4 also. So another one, similar baton. You will have some some conclusion here in the red uh, letters, the same selectivity of release according to the tyone's nature for the five different yeasts. The sub LK97, the highest tyone release. Okay? And those two, S33 and SO4, got a greater ability to S35, the alcohol form. Any questions to here, up to now? Yeah, I hope that you can follow me. Huh? Just again, so the higher the column here, it means it release more of the tiles out in the free form, right? And this one, the S35 form. So it needs to do two steps in order to have this S35 uh, estate, ester. That was the 16, one of the, uh, one of the precursor. Now the second precursor, we say it's harder to release, which it, it needs uh, three enzymes. Right, for your information. And now we see the same, the same uh, phenomenon here, the same uh, baton here. The K97 still doing very strong, B256 a bit stronger here. With this uh, tiles, we have absolute high of K97. The S33 here, a little bit of S35, but also releasing. And there, K97 also does a good job. Okay, we have similar result with different recusa. That's the main message here. Oh, sorry. Now we come to the timing during the maturation. Very important message here. You can see there is, we have some more data from here to the, uh, to the main uh, fermentation. Uh, and we check it, there is no type of release, but from the time we down, uh, we make the temperature down, we cool down the temperature at uh, four degrees Celsius for maturation, it start having tiles. So it's very important. The tiles are gonna be released during the maturation time. And it's keep going up uh, more and more, first day, second day, third days, and then there is some tiles going down there. You see? So here, uh, although we have the acetate form going up, this is the acetate form. It's a bit later because it needs the tyones released first and then it's 35, okay? And it's stronger, even though it's lower concentration, but it's powerful, more powerful in the threshold, in the sensory. And when they're going up, some of them going down already there, the, the orange one. So we have some, uh, some clues here. You need to have some kind of maturation at this temperature, okay? to have higher tile release, and then maybe three days is gonna be the good, good time to have this compromise result. But depends whether you want to have this one or not, or you want to have those more effects. Check it out. That's what the 16, 16 here, right? Uh, one of the precursor. The second type of precursor here we have is harder to release, but if, you, if we magnify it, you can see Find similar, similar uh, result. There is no tile release again in the main maturation. Um, sorry, main fermentation, and just happen in the maturation. Stronger after two, three days. Okay. So if you want to have more tiles, we may want to have the maturation time 
in this step. Okay, that was the, uh, the same uh, gravity. Now we go with different words, gravity. Okay, here we have 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 17 gravity. We would like to understand with different concentration of words, sugar content inside, what's happening? Okay, you can see there, the data can say 12 plato give you quite a uh, high amount of tions. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and <coughs> there's some, sorry, there's some uh, data showing that when we go very high here, it's, it's reduced a bit, okay? We can choose which uh, gravity we want. It depends on the hop also, on the, on the yeast as well. But with, when you go into this uh, second recursor, which is glutathione, okay? There are 16 here, glutathione. You have 16, uh, 15 gravity, showing you the best result. So maybe you want to have that 15 gravity to have the highest concentration of ion release and esterification as well. Okay, any questions up to now? Now, uh, we want to check another uh, way that if different hop would uh, bring some more interesting results. Different hops mean here. We try with hop av available in the market and checking the free tiles. What are the free forms there? And then checking also the bound forms. How much is it inside? And we run with different uh, types of yeast we have here, and then checking how much more free tiles release. Okay, maybe you want to, to know what happened with different hops, maybe the hop you are using in your brewery as well. Here, very important message. We run the analysis, we check the free tion, which is already available, okay? Free one in your hop, in the hop, right? We have those data, yeah. With Citra, Halatau, Holaris, there, yeah. okay? And the precursor as well. Precursor mean it bound there, not giving you any benefits yet. But the yeast will help you. You can see it here, very big number, okay? How come is that big number compared to the other? Here, here. And remember, this precursor, a bit harder to release because it needs three enzymes for that, okay? Not just one beta lease. So we have to understand the, the second precursor a little bit more, how to release it, because we have more potential, yeah, more impact. Wow, here's the result. Citra go first. We have the citra there, and the acetate form, which is at 35 already in the hope. You can see it have very high, already very high citra. And this one, it is the uh, order unit. It means that when it over one, you can feel it. Under that, you cannot see, okay? And the free one and the bout, the bout mean that it's uh, been released already, but from the bout uh, form. You understand? Okay? So Citra, quite high in the acetate, and also uh, some extra acetate form of tyones been released by the, by the yeast, because it was in the bout form, and now it released. We can feel it. A little bit less here in the tiles uh, uh, alcohol forms. So we can see most of the aromatic fraction come from the acetate forms. And no very different between the yeast here for the total tiles. Most of the tiles from the Sidra are free tiles. So you don't have to care that much for this kind of pop. But let's go for this one. Halatau. Okay. Yeah, K97 can help you to get the, a bit more tiles here, higher than the others, and again, it's, uh, it released some, some bowel form here. But you can see the order unit here is lower than, lower than the, the Cedra. So the conclusion here is that most of the aromatic fraction come from the acetate form as well for this hop. So tiles, and tiles in acetate form. 
not much difference between the years for the total tiles, but more than 50% of the tiles from the hollow tile are free. So the seeds are even higher percentage, right? This one is a bit lower. And the polaris one. You can see here, the striped one is the bounce one. This one the bounce, huh? The bounce been released. The bounce been released here. You can see, huh? So there is not that much free form available in the hop, but the yeast help you to release it. Those, the striped one is the releasing uh, ones. Okay? So it helps you to have much more uh, other unit. Conclusion there. Aromatic fraction come from the acetate form and significant differences between the yeast for total tiles. And the K97 here, you can see, very strong releasing rate among those four, uh, on those one, two, three, four, five yeast. Okay, so here just depends on the hop of, uh, the, the, the hop origin, the hop uh, 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 materials, the yeast will play different roles, okay? If we don't have a lot of free form, the yeast can help you to have a lot more free by releasing those tiles out. And even acetate, that's A mean acetate, it means esterification form. Wow, now we, that's what analysis one, okay? Now we go for cascade, but a little bit more human feeling. So maybe analysis go high, but what we feel is more important. The harmony, the, uh, the one we like or not. Maybe too, too much of one thing is not really good sometimes. So in this study, we run the, the trials with all different use and checking sensory analysis mainly and in different types of hopping regime. Okay, so we do late hopping, dry hopping, and half here to see the same yeast, how it reacts with different hop regime, and different yeast, how it works. It's very big data here, be prepared. So, um, do I need to explain the late hopping here? Anybody knows already, right? What the late hopping and dry hopping is here. Now, we go into the data. Yeah, a little bit hard to understand, but I will try to make you understand now. In this uh, uh, graph, you can see zero go into this fruity, it means that which yeast, which trial go into this uh, area, giving you more fruity, okay? The farther from this center give you more fruity. And if it go into that side, it's more general hoppy. And it go farther, it means stronger hoppy, okay? That's human feeling, not analysis anymore. And you can see here, a lot of data showing that the yeast diversified in that much. So they are doing something different here in the same hop, right? Even late hopping or dry hopping, for example, K97 here, we have late dry hopping giving you more fruity, and where's the other? Very hard to see from here. But we will see in the next slide, but K97 dry hopping even more uh, general hopping there. Here's easier to see with color. So we have S33 in green, K97 in that red, and S189 is yellow. So easier for you to see. One message here, okay? Different uh, hopping regime give you different results, quite sure, right? But different yeast will change that perception as well. So the, the S33, where is it now? K97, uh, okay, here. The green one gives you fruity together with K97 in the same, but this one can give you more in late dry hopping. LD, hex, it means late dry hopping. And the dry hopping of S1, A9 is there. It's quite grouping the yeast here if you do dry hopping. Okay, if you do late hopping, it's different. It diversifies more. And if in the same case of late uh, the same case of K97, late dry hopping, dry hopping gives you more general hobby, but the S33 gives you more there. It means stronger here, okay? In the balance between fruity and hobby, but stronger. How can it bring you more here? 
the farther of the center is means stronger, right? So it gives you more something of a human feeling. How? So we were uh, uh, talking about the S certification of the S33. It would S35 the tiles out and then uh, bring you more uh, aroma just because the substances become stronger in the threshold. It needs lesser concentration for, for one threshold. Okay. Any question here? Okay. Hope you understand me. <laughs> a, bit, a bit hard in this uh, graph, but it's showing that uh, the yeast does something different. Depends on the yeast types, the same hop, the same hop regime, but it gives you different things. So there, here's some conclusion for that. The same hop cascade study, if you go K97, it gives you more tropical, general hoppy, while the S33 will give you a bit more fruity, okay? Juicy and fruity. And the S189, a little bit herbal and floral there. Very um, short but uh, clear conclusion here. That's human feeling, right? It's, it's a general, general sensory. Now we go for the Niba. We have some other trial with the uh, Brut IBA as well, but we don't have a lot of time now, so we go focus on Niba today. So if we know Niba, it is hazy IBA, and very important fruit forward, hop aroma. Yeah, fruity one and juicy, okay? So we uh, run trial with different yeast for that exactly hazy IBA on Niba, uh, the Niba one with three different hop varieties. And this is the uh, recipe. We have citra, uh, moyak, and seal. Uh, study with different yeast here. The word was 16 plateau massing in this scheme. Okay, 40, 25, one in different temperature. Maturation, fermentation, and centrifuge. Okay, I hope that it's not that fast. It's very no, uh, normal uh, brewing scheme, not special things. You can see here, spider web, okay? But uh, we need to focus on the color now, but uh, K97 is that red, right? I see it here, red or orange, yeah? Orange, SO4 uh, yellow, and S33 is blue. Not that dark blue, let's go for S33. I want to go with you, I'm not sure here. It's a bit the same here. Yeah, here. S33, there, this way. It's very important here. Hop tropical, strongest, okay? So the fire is high intensity, the same, huh? And there, hop character, stability level, fermentation, fruity. So the main thing here, we need to understand that different yeast will make you different total overall sensory. And some type of yeast will enhance in certain way, and specifically thing here, K97 and S33. You can see the K97 orange, right? Very strong here. And hop character, hop character there. So it's general hoppy, gonna be the K97, and fruity, and fermentation fruity and hop tropical, it's gonna be S33 is the best. It doesn't mean that they will give you uh, uh, more delicious beer, but more forward in that way, okay? Depends on the, uh, the beer type, depends on your positioning of your beer as well. What do you want to have in your beer? Now we go back to that uh, graph, and we, we have hop character there, uh, we was trying one time uh, with all the yeast, right? But with Cascade, and now we try in this way in the Niba, specifically in Niba, how the yeast work with this Niba beer. So we have K97, hop character again. So different recipe giving you similar phenomenon, okay? The yeast will give you more hop character, and the S33, juicy here, yeah? The stronger juicy. Hop citrix, hop fruity, hop tropical, and the SO4 also going this way as well. You remember those three years, can, this one can release more tiles, 
right? This one can add 35 more. So look like the add 35 giving you this one, more than, more than uh, tyones alone. Okay? Wow, this one, if, a bit uh, uh, more information here, specific, uh, specifically for the uh, analysis of uh, the hop compounds, again, alone. And here the sensory and the total, the total uh, hop oils we analyze. Right? Sensory here, analyze, analyze, okay? So we have the, here, the yeast will give you more of that compounds, more of total hop oils, so they very strong here. Those two yeast, S33 and K97. The other, a little bit cast, uh, scattering that way. Here, if we delete everything, we have SO4, S33, K97 in this side. Again, they're grouping each other in the same phenomenon. And if we analyze the total hop oils, we have here, the king here. The total one is more uh, complex, a sum of everything, okay? It's giving you more extraction. And the other one is S33 is second, SO4 is not that bad. Go to T850A and S1A9 as well. But this one is the highest, the absolute highest compared to the others. So that's why uh, with that study, we know that the S33 is giving you fruity and juicy, okay? So it could be a good choice for this type of beer, Niba, which is that characteristic is uh, very admired in that beer. But K97 would give you another way of general hoppy in uh, a bit less juicy, but more general hoppy. And SO4 as well can help you in another choice for the type of the beer. Those are the uh, descriptor, descriptor of those uh, yeast. So you have here the two C's go quite high, quite high here, but uh, K97 is not that high from here, okay? But hop character is all very high. Two C a little bit lower than SO4, very strong here. Any question up to now? So, conclusion. So we actually we take uh, we we put the conclusion before the testing session. So we have in the Niba, even in the fruit IBA, we don't uh, show the fruit IBA data study here. But uh, if you come to our booth, we can show more. If you're interested in this type of beer, and we have total some of the hop oils in those study, showing that K97 very strong here. The second one. And third one here, okay? And uh, we recommend these three years for those uh, I Niba. Very fruity uh, forward. A cascade study, we have tropical here for K97. We have fruity, we have herbal for those different years. And the Tyons release study conclusion here. We have the ability of sub L release three Tyons different way. And they can't release forms as well. Two precursor, right? So very important, uh, not just this one. Some study, they just focus on this uh, 16, not that glutathione uh, compound. The K97 is the best candidate for its ability to release thions under alcohol forms. The flavor contribution of thions in beer is much bigger with acetate, which is very low threshold. We don't need a lot for few uh, to recognize it. And the sub LS33 SO4 emerged as a good challenger for their better acidification efficiency. Original gravity, very important. If you want to release more of this uh, precursor, you would need to focus on 15 plateau. And there, maturation at four degrees Celsius after three days can be a good choice for you. If you go too low, too fast, you may lose some of the good aroma. Any question? Yeah, please. Target of the, I, uh, yeah, okay. So we will try soon uh, one of the Niba here. Uh, the target one, you, could, you can decide. 
but usually that beer is going to be a bit high, 40, 45. But you cannot feel that much of the bitterness, but more hoppy aroma. Okay, so like, if you run the analysis, it go high compared to the 25, for example. But in this beer, because we got other, uh, we got more aroma com compounds, and we have uh, different composition and fruity uh, aroma. It balances the bitterness. You will feel it less bitter, but the number is high, so it's it really not that exactly uh, focused on the bitterness level compared to uh, what we feel. Oh, okay, you check it out with this beer. The antigen and has it depends how you do with your brewing as well. Okay? So now, I'm very uh, happy to uh, invite you to go to our uh, collaboration brew. Uh, been uh, with guys and fermentists, the hops sponsored by Brew Nation. And we did the, uh, this IBA, uh, New England style IBA, with that sub LS33. So uh, I would like to invite Mr. Narayan to have some uh, work of our, ah, okay, yeah. So, Ms. Vidya, please come to the stage and ex explain uh, our collaboration, uh, Brew, and you will understand more with the sample. Can you hear me? Uh, so this is our recipe for the uh, NIPA, the hazy IPA. Um, there's the malt bill, uh, the hops, fermentation temperatures, uh, and the beer statistics there. Uh, so what we uh, really tried to do is uh, pack a lot of hoppiness uh, in the brew. Uh, for a lot of biotransformation and thiol release. Uh, so we did a lot of um, hopping here. The Idaho 7 uh, was used as uh, a mash hop uh, because it was also very high on the Yakima Chief uh, survivables uh, in the hot side. Um, so we chose Idaho 7 for the mash hopping. There was a First word hop with Amarillo and the Citra and Mosaic came uh, in a lot of the kettle hopping and whirlpool hopping. Uh, so hoping that there would be a lot of uh, thiol release or biotransformation during fermentation. Then uh, the fermentation was at a constant uh, 20 degrees. Uh, it, uh, it was a very, very short fermentation. Just show you this. Yeah, you can see the uh, plateau drop in about like four days. Uh, it was very, very rapid and it stopped at 5.6. We got an attenuation of uh, 65%. And um, there was uh, diacetyl uptake, but there was a lot of high, um, sulfur production uh, during fermentation. Uh, but the reabsorption we found was very, very quick. Uh, it was about two days of reabsorption, and then the sulfur uh, cleared out quite well. The temperature, not much of a change, uh, and then we cold crashed it to four degrees. Hopefully some uh, release and esterification happened at that point. Uh, and then because of tank constraints, we couldn't really bring it down to two, so there was an extended uh, four degrees. Don't know what happened. Uh, uh, with the esterification at that point. Uh, so it was held at uh, four degrees for the most part, and then it was uh, uh, kegged uh, without centrifugation. Yeah, uh, so we prefer to just keep this uh, without centrifugation because uh, we thought that we will strip off uh, a lot of the flavor compounds uh, doing centrifugation. So we took a risk uh, not centrifuging this beer 
Uh, we usually do centrifugation for all our uh, uh, hoppy beers as well. Uh, we chose not to do it. Um, oh, that's it. Um, anything, uh, any other, uh, it also went through a, a triple dry hop. Uh, we just wanted to maximize uh, the biotransformation, whatever the yeast could do. Uh, and we just also wanted to spread the risk. Uh, so we did a triple at different temperatures. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we can start serving the beers. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, it was uh, end of fermentation. Uh, at a high fermentation temperatures, and we brought it down another 10 degrees, we did another dry hop, brought it down to 4 degrees, it did another high, dry hop, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Any questions? Target was uh, 45. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's not listed out here. Okay. Yeah, it's there. 45. Yeah. So bitterness there is 45. Yeah, fermentation 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, you can um, basically usually um, or with all the countries, we the same like India, right? We um, love to have clear beer, a high clarity, but uh, not necessarily all the countries does the same. Uh, in some other country, they need uh, nearby with higher turbidity. So basically, this yeast can help you more in the turbidity, and uh, somehow, in all the trials, the brewers need to to increase the turbidity as well. It's kind of the uh, characteristic of this beer. So if you bring the nearby and uh, to the competition without that haziness, it's going to be a bit a bit uh, challenging. Okay, that's one of the uh, category you need to have sometimes yeah, international way so you can uh, please try the beer and uh, a very hop, uh, very interesting character there uh, anybody want a uh, question or want uh, uh, I have a question share uh, straight up oh yeah does uh, k97 provide uh, a beetleize activity uh, does it promote the uh, beetleize enzyme activity to uh, unlock those uh, bound tiles yes yes so we found in the presentation, the K97 can help you to absorb, to release more tiles. That's the beta uh, liaise activity. As well. So what sure. temperatures, uh, what fermenting temperatures would you recommend for the highest amount of enzymatic activity? So uh, the, uh, we, we found in the presentation, okay, the temperatures should be like 4 degrees Celsius maturation time. It's more important than main uh, fermentation so for, for, for tiles release. So would you recommend like dry hopping cold after the fermentation to, uh, for the enzymatic activity or uh, for, to unlock the tiles? So uh, you can try different ways and see a uh, different hop as well. So what we, we found in this study, it does not mean that all the, uh, will be on the same. It can be tendency to similar, but we need to have more of the study with different type of hop and parameters. It's so in use that there is some, some uh, uh, good practice but not necessarily a general uh, for everything, okay? We have to try out to see. And you can see it by your sensory as well. Uh, we will have more study in uh, a brute IBA in some other uh, different parameters. But uh, from now to that time, we, can, we know already the uh, condition in maturation will affect the, uh, the tile release. And one of the yeast, some kind of the yeast can help you release more than the other. That's a very important message. Is there a target pH range that you would, you, you would recommend for uh, the thiol uh, uh, activity, like for the enzyme? Yes, yes. K97, uh, we recommend. If you want to have the, general... The, the pH, pH range. Excuse me? pH. Yeah, pH, yeah. Yeah, uh, in normal pH you have in your beer. So, like, if you go with sour beer, it's going to be a bit uh, uh, more study you need to do. But this NIBA, this brute IBA, which cascade in that trial, you can see... The beer, that beer specifically is your normal uh, uh, beer. But we may, yeah, you're right, we may want to change the BX in the sour beer different times to see how it's happened. But we're looking for something general here. 
for that normal uh, uh, pH of the beer, you would say it's 4.2 uh, something like that in, but in those beer, but the sour beer is going to do something different. Now. Awesome. Thank you. Um, there's some mic for you. Excuse me? Yeah. What? How stable is the beer in terms of flavor and in terms of Ah, okay. How stable the beer? So, okay. Uh, the question was how stable of the, the aroma, right? The aroma. So, we need to, to check on that as well. What you see, we are in the industry that uh, hope be going that way. Uh, the, the stable going to different with what lager do. So, your concern is about the, the change, but how much is, is it change? In lager, you change it a bit, we, we can recognize easy because the lager is very clean. Right? It's very clean. And then uh, anything change, you would fire it out. But in this type of beer, fruity, hoppy, and uh, a lot of uh, interesting aroma, something change you may not see. That's uh, the point of the, uh, the, the IBA is more, uh, you know before, the reason why IBA is happening, right? We have more hope to protect the beer, even the stability of the flavor. So what I mean is that we don't really uh, uh, have an uh, aging study for that, but look like it's not exactly that important for this type of beer in, craft, in this uh, trial, in the study. Okay, so the hobby will help you a lot in that point of view to protect, to cover the, the uh, stability of the flavor. You understand my point? Where's Miss Video? <laughs> ah, okay, anybody want to share about the beer testing? Very nice, uh, I test it, yeah. <laughs> One of the thing I want to share is that uh, the, the sugar there, the rare residual sugar of, of this uh, S33 a little bit high, but uh, it will help you to balance the bitterness, okay? And the bitterness of the beer balance the sweetness. It go in the same way. It bring down together. So mean that uh, you want to have more ho uh, aroma, but bitterness will come, attrition will come, and then uh, you have your, uh, your sugar, regi uh, residual sugar, will help you to keep it down. But uh, the feeling, not, not the analysis, right? The feeling, you don't feel that sweet. You don't feel that bitter because they have each other. Even the sour, the sourness of the beer, you feel will be lower if you uh, have a little bit higher sugar. Maybe Western people doesn't like that, that feeling of uh, sugar. In, in the world, uh, in the beer, but not necessarily Asia, or especially uh, South Asia. Okay. We were also wondering if the strain was maltotriose negative uh, or weak fermenter of maltotriose. I think uh, Hui can yeah. explain more. So the ester the tree is uh, uh, maltotriose negative, so it will not eat maltotriose. If you want to have the same similar type of beer. A little bit less fruitiness, but more general hoppy, high old release, and higher attenuation, which is from I mean, more. K97 is going to be the best one for you. Okay? They, they can generate similar. So we can see in the, in the map of sensory, right? Uh, in the map of the sensory, you uh, can see the, the, the two or three years go the same way. Just a little bit more hoppy or fruitiness. And the K97 would give you higher attenuation. If you want that type, but if you want this type, this Niva with X33. Okay. Any other question? <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the beer. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, could I call on to stage Suraj Nair and our presenters for this session, Miss? Please, uh, we'd like to give you a souvenir. Could we get you all on stage? We'd like to give you all a souvenir as well and get some pictures. So, could we get a round of applause? Thank you, thank you so much. It was a great session.